It's now four years, four months and nine days since Pat went out for a quiet Saturday night with some mates, only to never come home. And there's not a day that we don't miss him. Pat would have completed his university studies by now and he'd be qualified as a physiotherapist and, and working, helping people in this, this crazy world that we're living in. But while we're all struggling with the lockdown at the moment, we're sure that Pat just would have taken it in his stride as he did so many things in his life. At the Pat Cronin Foundation, we've had to adapt in these strange times to be able to continue with our Be Wise and the Coward Punch message. We're now delivering online Be Wise education sessions to schools and we're also providing schools with our Be Wise classroom um, teacher resources where teachers can get our message across to kids offline as well. In addition, we're also working on our e-learning program and this will enable us to roll our message out wider and wider and wider. Today, however, marks another very special day in the life of the Pat Cronin Foundation with the launch of our very special storybooks. These storybooks have been written for primary school aged children and will allow us to have a message from all the way from prep through to year 12. Our aim is to have a set of these storybooks in every primary school in Australia. Ideally, we would have been having this um, launch today in person. However, that's not to be with the current lockdown. So here we are today delivering this to you online. These storybooks form a critical part of our Be Wise program by introducing children at an early age to our three important messages of Be Wise, Think Carefully and Act Kindly. It's very important that from the earliest possible age, children are taught and learn that violence and aggression is never, ever okay. There are three books in this beautiful series, The New Playground, The Four Square Challenge and Footy Fever. In these books, you'll be introduced to a character, a little blonde-headed, cheeky little boy by the name of Patch. And this is one of Pat's nicknames from the earliest days of his life. You will also be introduced to Skipper the Owl, whose posters appear in the classrooms in the books, delivering the important message and reinforcing the be wise, think carefully and act kindly message. Skipper was also a, a popular nickname of Pat's from when he were, became the captain of his under-16s football team. We have a number of very special guests joining us today for the launch, uh, including our very first ambassador, Matthew Richardson, um, well-renowned public speaker and storyteller, Ben Crow, um, the wonderful author of the storybooks and our dear friend, Maureen Highland. And as well, we're going to hear for some children who've read the books and what they think about the, the books. So firstly, um, let's hear from former AFL and Richmond superstar, Matthew Richardson, um, who's a father of two girls himself, and hear what he has to say about our very special storybooks. Well, thanks Matt and Robin uh, for having me along today to be a part of this uh, fantastic book launch for the Pat Cronin Foundation. I really am thrilled to be able to say a couple of quick words for you today. Uh, I met Matt and Robin in 2016, not long after Pat's unfortunate death, and they outlined what they'd love to achieve for the Pat Cronin Foundation and asked me if I'd like to be involved. And, and really the timing um, of, of them asking me sort of struck a chord with me because one of my best mates in Tasmania, who is a publican, uh, was leaving work late one night and was hit from behind with a coward punch and ended up in intensive care for, for a long period of time. And as a consequence, uh, it's really affected his, his life moving forward. So they asked me to be involved and I really, I really uh, wanted to jump on and try and help them raise awareness. So move forward to 2018 in the official launch of the Pat Cronin Foundation. I was able to say a couple of words there that day. And one of the things that I was really uh, struck by that day at the launch was all of the talk about raising awareness and education at a young age so we can stop these incidents occurring in the future. And I thought, what a fantastic uh, way to do it through through some children's books and, and education. And I think it really is the way to go because I have two young daughters now and I certainly don't want them to, to grow up in an environment where these types of incidents are still occurring. So hopefully uh, with these fantastic books, 
that are being launched today, we can get that message out there and give some kids something they can relate to because Matt actually told me a story that day in 2018 uh, of a football clinic at Punt Road Oval, um, me playing for the Tigers, I was there that day, I was still playing, it's a long time ago, but Pat was there that day with his brother Lucas and I actually remember the incident after Matt reminded me, all of the kids were trying to put me off and they were having great fun as I shanked the ball out of bounds on the fall and through the points and it was just a great day and I know that, that uh, Matt and Lucas and, and Pat would have remembered that day moving forward. And I think, I think that's important. Kids need things they can relate back to, stories that they can relate back to. And um, reading these books to my kids, and this is the one I loved, of course, Footy Fever. We've been reading them to Zoe and Riley at night. And we try and tell Zoe that she needs to be kind. It's one of the biggest things we try and teach her, to be kind and to think of others and to share, particularly when we're at the playground out the back of our house, to share and let other people go first and wait your turn. And um, I think there's great messaging in these books around those sorts of things. And I think the footy one, relating to teamwork, thinking of others, not yourself, thinking carefully, um, and you know, supporting your teammates and friends. And we know that as they get older, those situations of needing support and someone thinking Thinking clearly and looking out for your mates is something that becomes really important so that we stamp out the incidents that we're here to prevent, the coward punch. So I'm wrapped to be involved. I look forward to my daughters reading these books and getting that important messaging out. And Skip of the Hour says, be wise, think carefully, act kindly. I think if we get that in at a young age, we can end the coward punch um, and fantastic initiative and uh, all the best to everyone. And uh, thanks to the Pat Cronin Foundation and Matt and Robin. Thank you. Wow. Thanks for your support, Richo. It's so wonderful to have someone with such a high profile supporting the work that we're doing with the Pat Cronin Foundation. The next guest we have may not be quite as well known as Richo. However, when Ben Crow talks, people listen. Ben Crow is Australia's most in-demand professional mentor and leadership coach, working with coaches, teams, CEOs and executive teams in Australia and all over the world. His work involves helping people with their mindset on the field professionally, with their perspective and off the, off the field personally to find a balance between confidence, happiness, achievement with fulfilment. He currently works with tennis world number one, Ash Barty, seven times world surfing champion, Steph Gilmore, the Australian men's and women's cricket teams Dylan Alcott and the Richmond Football Club since 2017. Robin and I were privileged to have had Ben's support of, uh, of the Pat Cronin Foundation in the early days to, to help us best tell our story and to connect with our supporters. Let's hear from Ben. Hi, my name is Ben Crow, and it's an honour and a privilege to say a few words for the Pat Cronin Foundation. Uh, my relationship with the Cronins goes back almost 60 years. Uh, my parents and Pat's grandparents were very dear friends. Uh, I went to primary school with Pat's uncle Rob and all his aunts. And I went to Whitefriars College with my brothers Patrick and Daniel, which is where Pat went to school. And on top of all that, both families are fanatical Richmond supporters. And I love what the Pat Cronin Foundation is doing at the moment, especially around education and especially around storytelling. Yeah, our life story is not our life. It's just our story and we're the author of it. But unfortunately, we've got this reptilian brain, this unconscious negative bias telling ourselves these stories that I'm not good enough or good looking enough or rich enough or successful enough, these shame based stories. And that's creating a, a generation where we've become the most addicted, medicated, in debt, obese adult generation in the history of the world. And when alcohol is included, it exacerbates these, these feelings and the consequences of that can be almost fatal. Right? And the opportunity I see with these three books is to teach kids at a really young age about intention and about choices that they're in control and it's their decisions, not the conditions that determines their mindset, their self-worth and their attitude. And that everyone in the world lives on the success of the same three things, how we think, what we prioritise and the decisions that we make. And if we can challenge how we think and take ownership of what we prioritise, then we'll start to make the right decisions and the right choices. 
and start to own our story, celebrate our imperfections and embrace our weird, but also find that unconditional self-worth right, and self-compassion and self-acceptance that will then enable us to be more accepting and more compassionate for others. In any situation or any condition, we tell ourselves one of two stories. Either I'm enough and I've got this, or I'm not enough and I haven't got this. And if we tell ourselves that second story, we effectively create these vertical relationships everywhere we go, in any relationships. Well, we might put ourselves below others, which at its extreme is an inferiority complex. Or we might put ourselves above others, yeah, with that bravado, which at its extreme is a superiority complex. But effectively comes from the same place, feeling that I'm not enough, not good enough. The antidote is to tell ourselves a different story, that I have got this and I am enough. And then we start to create horizontal relationships everywhere we go. And we start creating horizontal relationships Everyone on the planet is equal. <laughs> yeah, we're different, we come from different backgrounds, we might go to different schools and play for different football clubs, but fundamentally everyone on the planet is equal. And when we show up from that place, the sense of humility and humanity and compassion and unconditional love of ourselves and others becomes more pronounced. And this I see as the opportunity that the Pat Cronin Foundation is celebrating and owning and doing everything they can to reframe our, the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves from a really, really young age. So I wish the Pat Cronin Foundation all the best. Uh, I hope these three books become bestsellers amongst every primary school boy and girl in the world and uh, go Tigers. Thanks, Ben. I think you'd have to agree that Ben has such a good way of being able to communicate and connect with people. Our next very special guest is Maureen Highland. She was a huge catalyst for getting these books off the ground in the first place. She's a dear friend of our family. She also taught at the primary school where Emma Lucas and Patrick all went to our ladies in Eltham. She knew Patrick as a little boy. She's just been amazing with all of this and she joins us now. Well, welcome to this very special book launch, Maureen. Um, can you tell those who are joining us what this has meant to you to have been involved in this project? When Pat died so tragically, I was like everyone else who knew the Cronin family. I felt absolutely helpless. I knew there was nothing I could say or do that would take away the pain and the heartache that they were feeling. Then just after the Pat Cronin Foundation was established, I sat down with Matt and Robin one day and they asked me if I'd think about writing some picture story books for primary schools that they could use in the educational program that they were developing. And I came home that day, opened up my computer and started typing straight away. I didn't need any think time because finally there was an opportunity for me to help them. And every moment that I've spent working on these books from that day until the current day has been an absolute privilege for me. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, next question. Um, look, we know there's been a heck of a lot of work that have gone into putting these books together. Um, is there anyone in particular you'd like to um, acknowledge or thank? Definitely. It's one thing to write a story, but it's another thing to have it produced in book form. And we were so blessed to have a team from Pearson Australia volunteer their time and their expertise to help us edit the books, design the books and have them ready for production. And right from the very start, we knew that the team that was working with us was not only offering their skills, but they were offering their hearts because from the earliest days we could tell that they believed in every single thing that the Pat Cronin Foundation stood for. It was an absolute pleasure to work with every single one of them. So on behalf of Matt and Robin and the Foundation and myself, I would really like to thank Pearson as a company, but in particular the team that spent hours and hours working with us to make these books what they've become. I think I've commented on more than one occasion to you, Maureen, about the passion that they showed and um, these these were these beautiful people didn't know Pat, and I think to see them throw themselves in like they did was is just so heartwarming to us. Yeah, it made such a difference. It really did. In the years that I'd spent working on writing programs, I never 
had the interaction like I had with the team, the team from Pearson, and it made me believe that the end product would be awesome. Despite the effort and the time that had to go into it, what we hoped and what we believed did come to fruition. And as I say, it wasn't, it wasn't just they were doing a job because it never seemed like that. They, they were doing something that they were so strongly wanting to see out, out in the wider community as well. Yes. So, and, of course, a picture storybook is only a story until it has pictures that tell <laughs> part of that story. And our illustrator, Bruce Rankin, was absolutely incredible. So much of these stories revolves around children and their emotions. And when I saw what Bruce had created with the characters, their expressions and their personalities that shone out of the pictures, I was really overwhelmed. They were far better than I ever anticipated and I'm so grateful that he took on the challenge of illustrating my books. And there's one other little group that I really would like to thank, and that's my three grandchildren, Mm -hmm. Joshua, Heidi and Wesley. While I was writing the books, I was always driven by little images of Pat from when he was in prep right through to he was in grade six. And I was equally driven by the fact that I wanted these three little people to be able to grow up in a society where they can freely go out with their friends and come home and share their experiences and their stories. And apart from that, the two elders were actually my very first editors. They read my first draft and we talked about it. They read my second draft and we talked about it. And it was through those discussions that I think I must have made some really crucial changes to the storylines. I cannot wait until one day in the very near future, I hope, that I can sit down with the three of them and we can share the stories together. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, excellent. Last question. Um, as a mother and a grandmother and also an educator um, of young people, you know, what, what is your hope for these books? My hope is the same as Matt and Robbins and I think everyone who's part of the Pat Cronin Foundation, that these books will make their way into every primary school in Australia and to many, many homes throughout the country. I hope that the books are read and discussed, peers with peers, children with supportive adults. I hope more than anything that every child that encounters these books will continue to walk through life being wise, thinking carefully and acting kindly. And if that happens, I know that I've come some way in helping Matt, Robin, Emma and Lucas fulfil one of their dreams. Excellent. Thank you. Like I said before, the word, finding enough words to thank you for this foray in there, they just don't seem to be enough. They're absolutely beautiful books. I um, cried and cried when I first read them. There was so much of Pat in them and the beautiful school that um, he went to and Emma and Lucas and that you were such a part of and you've just you've captured some very, very special memories and helped to deliver such an important message and we can't thank you enough. Thanks. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I've cried many tears during the time that these have been underway, but I think that comes from knowing you people so well and, and having been such a part of Pat's early life. And that was the challenge you gave me this time was to write books to children who are in those early stages of their lives. So thank you both very, very much. Thank you. Thanks, Maureen. Thank you. Yeah. So now let's hear from some children who've been lucky enough to read the books already. The new playground. Pat, time to get up, called Dad. Pat opened his eyes and stretched his arms wide. Today was going to be awesome. Today was new playground day. Everybody chimed in at once. Take turns, no pushing, help everyone be nice and not rough. But just as he began to move, Charlie appeared, running straight past Samir. Hey, I'm going first, Charlie blurted. Red in the face, he pushed Patch away. Patch toppled over the edge of the slide. He hit the mound and rolled a little way down before coming to a stop. You felt frustrated, said Miss Stanley. 
but that's no excuse for pushing Patch. I didn't want to hurt Patch, said Charlie. I just wanted to go first, and he was in the way. Patch could have been very badly hurt. We are lucky that he only got a big front and a straight knee. Miss Stanley talked to Charlie about how important it was to think before acting. You can take some big, deep breaths or move away to a quiet place. Or close your eyes and count to ten, Charlie offered. That's right, said Miss Stanley. It's important to think before acting and not let your emotions get the better of you. If, if you feel an emotion is overcoming you, it's important to take some time to calm down so that you can act kindly. Then it's very important to act safely. To treat other people nicely. Because it tells a very special message. To not be mean to people on the playground. It helps children to learn to act kindly and not hurt anybody. These books help kids stop and think and make good choices. I think Miss Stanley is an important character of the new playground because she helps Charlie realise what he has done is wrong and she gives him some strategies for him to use in the future. I think these books are great and kids are going to love them. Okay, so thanks to the kids for their uh, involvement in that little video. You could really see how they enjoyed the books and absolutely took the messages in. So before we close the launch uh, today, we're really wrapped to be able to say that the books are now available for purchase via our website, www.patcronenfoundation.org.au. Now the books will be sold for $20 individually, or you can buy a set of all three books for $50. There's also a special offer for primary schools who buy a set of books where we'll provide a further 20% discount. So why not buy a set of books for yourself, maybe for your children, for your grandchildren. Um, but even more importantly than that, how about thinking about buying a, an extra set of books and donating that to a primary school that you've been involved with or your children have been involved with. This will definitely help us on our aim of trying to get a, a set of books into every primary school in Australia. A huge thanks goes out to all of those involved in bringing the, our, our uh, storybooks to life, including, of course, our author Maureen, and also a, a wonderful team of volunteers from Pearson Australia. And I'd just like to read their names out um, for their, their efforts. So a big thanks to Casey McGrath, Anne, Anne Donald, Michelle Thomas, Lauren Smith, Alicia Dudley, Kerry Nagel, Rebecca Harris, Sophie Snerniger Rankin, Benjamin Harris and Jennifer Johnston. Thanks also to Keenan Archer from Minuteman Press in Abbotsford for his assistance in getting the books printed and ready for distribution today. A special thanks also to Reuben Street from Blueprint Studios, a good friend of ours who's helped us put this production together today. And thank you also to our very special guests today in Matthew Richardson, Ben Crow, Maureen Highland, and of course, the children who got involved in that video. Finally, let's always remember the underlying reason why we're all here today, and that's for Pat. Be wise, and together we can end the coward punch. Thank you. Thank you.